Guten Morgen. Uh, ursprünglich wollte ich meinen Vortrag auf Schweizerdeutsch machen, aber gut, mit meinem Hochdeutsch kann, habe ich hier eigentlich nichts zu suchen. And there's a reason why I'm going to speak in English. <laughs> a, a day is only 24 plus or minus one hour, and I have much less time to talk to you a little bit about how to check the time, uh, that you shouldn't check the current time too often, and that you should check what your government does. My name is Miroslav Shedivy. I was born in Bratislava in Czechoslovakia, which is currently the time zone Europe Bratislava. Studied in France at uh, Insalion, uh, which is the time zone of Europe Paris. And now I'm working uh, as a senior software developer for Zolute GmbH in Karlsruhe, just uh, one and a half hour train ride from here to the north, which is time zone of Europe Berlin. It looks like that I have spent my whole life in the Central European time zone and that I have not so much to speak about that. But actually in our company, Zalute, which stays behind the Germany's largest price comparing uh, website, Billiger.de, we use Python and a lot of other open source uh, software technologies and we have a lot to do with time uh, as well. If you would like to come to the place where both bicycle and car were born and uh, to the region of the best German wine and the best French beer. Just speak to me after the talk or to my colleagues. Okay, uh, I'm not going to give any to do any lightning uh, to do any uh, like life coding, but uh, I have to do something with time. So please set your time to 10:33 Central European Summer Time here in Basel in Switzerland, Thursday, 11th of July, because all the following uh, slides will concern uh, exact this time. When you are using Python and you want to get the current time, you can import the standard daytime library and then do daytime, daytime now, and you will get the current time with year, month, day, uh, hour, minute, second, microsecond, so 10.33. But this is not what you want to do because on your computer, this is what you get. On a server set to UTC, you will get a similar daytime object that is offset by two hours because it's set to UTC and you see no difference between these two uh, objects except for two hours offset in the hours. So if you compare these two daytime objects, you have an offset of two hours, although they have been created at the same moment. So you don't want to do this because you don't know what time zone your server is on or computer and you will get different uh, results. So don't use daytime, daytime now. You can use daytime, daytime UTC now, which will return also a daytime object always in UTC. So you see there is 8.33. So the current time in UTC, that's great. This is what you get on every computer. Um, but it, in Python, explicit is better than implicit because here in uh, implicitly you see, uh, you know implicitly that you are in UTC, but it is not in the object itself. So what you can do in Python 3, uh, you can tell now and then tell the computer, I want daytime time zone UTC. I want the current time in the UTC time zone. This time you can use now method because you give it a time zone. It will return a daytime object that is time zone aware. It means that it knows that it is in, the, in some time zone. And with this object, uh, with this daytime object with uh, tzit info attribute set, you have an exact uh, daytime object and you know what time is it, exact time, which is the same on every computer, and you know also in which time zone it is. So this is completely explicit and perfect. But we are now here in Basel, and we now to know the current time here. It is not 8.33, it's 10.33. So what you can do, you do the same, you create a new time zone, which is defined by the de time delta uh, object of two hours offset, and then you get the current time with the information we are two, hour, we are two hours ahead of UTC, and it is 10.33. Okay, but we know that now we are in the Central European summertime, so two hours ahead of UTC, but in winter, or 2022, or 1970, what was the time? We don't know whether it was, we were two hours ahead of UTC or not. So you have to reach out for a third party library. PYTZ is the best choice, is the standard choice. And in this case, if you ask now, PYT is a time zone uh, Europe Zurich. You define this Zurich time zone, or you define, you use it. Then you will get a daytime object, 1033 correctly, and um, in the TZ info uh, field, there is Zurich with two hours ahead of UTC. And now you have an object that is perfectly defined as the local time here in Zurich or here in Switzerland. So this is how we get the current time. But maybe you sometimes want to, sometimes you want to define the time literally, so 
create a new daytime object, but not the current time, but define it with uh, all the attributes. And then you use the daytime object uh, um, constructor and you define all the fields, year, month, day, hour, minute, second, microsecond, and the last field is a time zone. But if you did, and you say, I want today 1033 in Zurich, the result you will get is a daytime object, but what you see in the TZ info, there is Europe Zurich, but there is no CEST plus two hours. There is some LMT and 33 minutes, 34 minutes. What's that? That's something that we are going to have a look at later. But if you convert this to UTC, you will get the current time 1033, or the time 1033, but not in the Central European summer time, but in some non-existent time zone that is 34 minutes ahead of UTC. So we don't want to do this. If you want to literally create a daytime object and uh, give it a time zone information, you have to create a daytime object that is time zone naive. It means you create daytime with all the information here, day, months, and so on, without the TZ info, and then you pass it to a time zone object using the localize method. And this way, you will get the right object, and you see in the TZ info, uh, there is Central European summertime, two hours ahead of UTC. Okay, now let's say that our current time with uh, the Zurich information is uh, in the variable now, and we want to add some di di time delta offset, 100 and 84 days, which is uh, approximately six months. Um, and then we will get a new object on the 11th of January 2020, 1033. But what you see in the TZ info, there is again Central European summer time, although in January there is Central European standard time, or only Central European time, with one hour ahead of UTC. But here you get two hours ahead of UTC. So this is also actually wrong. The interpreter thinks that in January we are using, we are at the same time zone offset like now in July. So you don't, if you use now, if you take this object and then you normalize it using uh, your time zone object, you will get 11th of January. Time zone is the standard time, one hour ahead of UTC, but you will get in the hour uh, field, you will get nine o'clock, one hour less. Because actually if now you add 184 times 24 hours, you will get really one hour less. In your, um, in your time information. So if you want to add really wall clock, it's 1033, you want to add uh, some number of days and then get a date with the same wall time, wall clock time, you will have, have to take the now, replace the TZ info, re remove the time zone information, then add those days and then localize it again and you will get the January time 1033 in the standard time. Please don't write everything down. Just have a look at the normalize and localize methods of, uh, of uh, time PYTZ uh, uh, library. Okay, so now for the next information, we will, I will just jump away from the time zones. There is one thing that I wanted to show you. Let's say we have this piece of code. We need two strings. We want one string with the current date, and we want a string with current day of the week. So we want 11th of uh, July and Thursday. With these two lines of code, it's easy, you can read it very well, but this code will break. This code will give, not break, but it will give you false information or information that you don't expect, and at that moment, very probably, you are not sitting in front of your computer. Imagine I start these two lines of code one microsecond before midnight. The first line of code executes on Thursday, 11th of July. The second line of code executes the next day, you will get already Friday, so you will, have, you will get two, two time informations that are actually not from the same day. What you want to do is to have a look at your clock only once. You check the current time, you save it into a variable, and in your logical step in one function, you work then with this now information. If we have a method, uh, the best way is to pass the current time as a parameter, then it will be testable much easier because you can uh, fake the current time and then test it much better. So check the current time only once. Um, on the other hand, there is one exception when you want to check for the current time more often. It is if you want in your runtime evaluate some runtime information, for example, some expensive operation like download. You want to evaluate how, far, how fast your download or some operation is, 
you get the current time at the beginning, at the end you subtract these two daytime objects, and then with total seconds you will get a float with uh, the time difference. But creating a daytime object with all these year and so on just to check the delta between two operations, that's not probably what you really need because, okay, it takes a few, uh, some time and you don't uh, need it, uh, you don't need to initiate uh, daytime objects always. So you can use the standard time uh, library, time.time, .time, expensive operation, again, time.time, .time, you get two floats, uh, this, uh, the, this difference between them, and you're done. The problem is that this can go wrong. Imagine that during the, your expensive operation, your NTP date server runs, so it means that the system clock of your computer will get updated. And if it was too uh, fast before, and then it will, like, the clock will be turned back time by a few seconds, it can happen that your start happens after end, and then elapsed is actually a negative number. You don't want to program this because this, you cannot really test it. It can happen at any time, and it can have some very bad consequences. So what you want to use is monotonic in Python 3, and monotonic returns some float, that is guaranteed to be monotonically increasing. It means that no matter what happens with your system clock, your end happens always after the start. If you are in the Python 3.7, you can even do monotonic in nanoseconds and you get an integer in nanoseconds. So, this was Python. Let's get back to the time zones. How would you measure time a few centuries ago? You could have a look at the sun when it is at the highest position, that's noon. Another day, again, noon, the, uh, the difference between the two is probably 24 hours. That's wrong. There is equation of time. Probably on some wall clocks, sundials, and so on, you have already seen something like an eight. This eight, this is equation of time, and it de defines that the rotation of Earth around sun, all the positions, mean that our mean, sun, or the sun position is not every day uh, at noon, at this highest position, uh, and it can oscillate here in Switzerland, in our latitude, by about plus or minus 15 minutes during a year. So it means that during a year, every day, every solar day is not 24 hours long. Uh, that's why people statistically, they calculated that we have to take something like a mean time, and this is where this mean in the world of GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, or LMT, local mean time, and so on, this mean time comes from. It means that during a year, we just forget about all these oscillations, or we calculate all these oscillations of the uh, sun position, and then we have a solar noon, which is approximately 24 hours uh, after each other. Okay, so that's, uh, that's okay. This is how you can get the current local time. But then later, with all the ship, uh, ships uh, lo um, travels uh, around the world in Atlantic Ocean, people wanted to get the current position. The current position, to get the current latitude, is not so difficult because you see the sun at its highest position and you know, okay, it is at its highest position, this angle, I know how far in the north or south I am. But the latitude, you can get, now it is the local noon here, but I have to know how, what current time, for example, in Paris on London is, so I can calculate my distance from these cities. The problem is that for many centuries you were not able to get a clock with you on a ship because all these sand, water clocks, they didn't work exactly, and even pendulum clock doesn't work on a moving ship. So it took uh, quite a long time and cost a lot of money and energy to develop a clock that you could take with you. So this was on the sea, but then even on Earth, you need something like coordinated time. You have to know what time is it somewhere else. In the beginning of the railroad in USA, they just, everybody, every city was using their local time, and the problem was that once not only once, but at least several times, there were trains on a single track that just started at the same time, and there were even some collisions and some death, because they didn't know what time is it exactly in this other city, and according to their timetables, they just sent two trains at the same time on a single track. And then, later, people saw that, the government saw that they have to coordinate this time, and then there were some regional or national times that were developed. There was Greenwich, France, of course, they had their own time. Uh, the French railroad, what they did, they took the, for, for the standard railroad time, they took the Paris time and they added five minutes to that and that was the French standard railway time. 
the five minutes was there only to allow late passengers to get to their train. But it was abolished after several years, and then uh, France uh, used a single time, and then they, they moved to, to GMT, to, to the Greenwich time. And this is how, okay, this is how Europe looked like uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, at least the time zones. Of course, the borders of the countries were a little bit different, but this is actually how it should like, look like today, because you have Greenwich at zero, one hour further, 15 degrees, we are actually in Prague, and the border between them as the border, like the middle way between them is at uh, seven and a half degrees, uh, which is actually around the border between Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and Benelux and France. But as we know, in 1940, uh, Hitler invaded Benelux and France, so he took them to Central European time, and uh, Franco in uh, Spain uh, thought, oh, that's cool, we are going to do it again uh, as well. And that's how it remained, but yeah. So this is, uh, the time zones actually could be like Greenwich and then plus minus uh, 12 hours, so 25 uh, time zones around the world. But it's a lot like this. If you import PYTZ and you ask what is the number of the time zones, you will get 440. So you have seen like Europe, Zurich, Berlin, Paris, Bratislava, and so on. All these have, are separate time zones but which means that they are not really, all these cities in Central Europe have now the current time and they switch to daylight saving time uh, at the same, uh, on the same date. But these time zones, how are they defined? They are defined um, like every place, every country, it's a largest city is defined as a separate time zone. And within countries, if there are more regions that uh, followed different time zone, different daylight saving time start and um, since 1970, they will be listed as a separate time zone. 1970. This means that you can more or less rely on PYTZ using the times from 1970. It contains all the inform most of the information also from before 1970, but they are not listed as separate time zones, and we are going to look at that uh, more specifically. So, these are the time zones in the world. Uh, same color means uh, the same time now. So you see Europe blue, our Central Europe, has the same time as Eastern Africa because we are now one hour ahead more uh, to our standard time. Even uh, Antarctica has several time zones. Uh, yeah. Where does this come from? I told you about PYTZ. You tell me, no, 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 I know Arrow, I know uh, DeLorean, I know that. Okay, you can use any uh, library you wish but all of them will be based on this information coming from IANA, which is Internet Assigned Numbers uh, Association. Um, this is not an authority like United Nations. This is like only an association that observes all this information and they list it on their website. And this is what all the operating systems, except for MS-DOS and similar, um, use this. So Unix, uh, all these systems, they, uh, they are based on this. If you go to this, to this website, you will find two things. There is an archive, mm, a downloadable uh, file with the edition of, uh, of the TZ data, and there is uh, a mailing list. You can see the archives, and you can also sign up and uh, follow it. And this mailing list is actually something that is the source of this whole information. In this mailing list, people write, oh, our government is going to switch to daylight saving time next year, or we are going to abolish it, or, or I have read something. Or I have found an information that Russia in 1917, there in some region, they did something differently. And all this information is compiled and released from time to time. The current version is, uh, comes from the last week. Um, it is this is data 2019B. Uh, this B means, uh, this is the second version of 2019. This year it is really quite, very quiet, but usually there are up to 11 uh, the releases per year. And this file, if you download it, 300 kilobytes, if you unpack it, you will find some Perl, Oak shell scripts, some documentation, but the most interesting are these files called Africa, Antarctica, Asia, South, North America, Europe, and so on. These files, this, this is like a book, like a book of history of the mankind in the past 130 years. It's really interesting read. Um, 
there are two things uh, in each file. There is some code that will be interpreted by all the parsers and converted, for example, to PYTZ, to time zone libraries for all uh, different programming languages, for database systems, for your system, for everything. And there are the comments that explain which li what which line means, and we are going to have a look at that. Um, if there is one picture you want to take from this talk, this is the one. Uh, if you want to read it correctly, turn your heads to the left. So, uh, x-axis are the years from uh, 1890 to 2038, and on the y-axis, if you just look like this, the zero is Greenwich, and everything to the to down is west, so America, zero is Europe, Africa, and then there is uh, Asia and Australia. And the, every line is one of these 440 time zones. And all that changes through uh, more than one century. At the beginning, what you see is really wild. This is the local time of each respective time zone. This is, for example, at 33 minutes above zero, we will find Zurich. This is this 34, no, 34, yes, 34 minutes. This is, this is the 34 that we have seen at the beginning. If you, in Stettiate uh, time zone object uh, for Zurich, at the beginning, these 34 minutes, it means that Zurich at the beginning was defined uh, as 34 minutes ahead of UTC. Then you see that it, it is like more normalized to more or less 24, some uh, 24 different time zones. Uh, there are some half hour time zones, some uh, four, a quarter hour time zone. And then what you see, this is daylight saving time every year. Then it stops. Then maybe you don't see that some lines just jump by, by one or two time zones to one or other direction. And then what you see sometimes there are vertical lines through the whole spectrum. And the vertical lines are some random Pacific uh, Ocean islands that just jumped the whole day and moved from <laughs> the eastern hemisphere to western or vice versa. 2019, the blue line, this is now. And now what you see, this daylight saving time, it goes on until future. This is how it is defined. It means, if you say, I wrote a Python application, I tested it, I put it in virtual and Docker, and it can run indefinitely, this is what it will do the whole time. 2021, European Union uh, wants to abolish uh, daylight saving time switching. Your code will just jump. So don't forget to update your uh, libraries. This is more defined, uh, specifically Europe. You see that every time zone is positioned in the largest city. So we have, for example, Zurich for Switzerland. Uh, in Switzerland, you see LI and DE. I will explain it later. Um, yeah. So this is how it looks in Europe. And this is how uh, the time zones look more specifically uh, in Europe, only the European time zones. In uh, 1919, you see there are quite uh, wild jumps somewhere in Russia. And between 1919 and 1940, you see a blue line around the, the minus one, no, plus one, uh, that is a little bit offset, but very regularly, uh, that's Netherlands. So, but let's return back to Switzerland. We are going to have a look at Europe Zurich time zone. So this is what you find as a code. Europe, Zurich, and then you have the offset. Uh, the dashes or Swiss or EU are the rules. I'm going to explain that. Then the short name of the time zone. You see LMT, LMT is local mean time. So LMT, every time zone had once LMT. Then there is BMT, this is burn mean time, and CE is Central European summertime or not. And then the last uh, column is until when it was valid. So it means Zurich as a time zone until 1853 uh, was uh, 34 minutes and 8 seconds ahead of UTC. And then they switched to Bern mean time. So it, it was still called Europe Zurich. There is no Europe Bern. Um, but the mean, the mean time in Bern is 5 minutes less. So this was still not the whole Switzerland because Genève stayed with their own time until 94. And only then they followed the Swiss um, time zone, Swiss time zone rule. So important is this time zone before 1970 is valid only for Zurich because Bern had their own local time, Genève, uh, Fribourg, uh, Lausanne, and so on. Every region, every city had their own mean time. So if you want to calculate something for, um, for any city before 1970, you can calculate it only for Zurich. So, and there is this Swiss. What does Swiss mean? 
it is defined somewhere else, that in, uh, uh, during the World War II, uh, Switzerland exper experimented a little bit with uh, daylight saving time, only once they, they, they just abolished it. And this EU uh, rule, this is something that most European uh, time zones are using, and you see there, is, there were some different time zones in 77, 80, and so on. Uh, but Switzerland uh, started following it only in 81. But European time zone uh, rule is st started in 1977. It means that there were already countries that followed the European rules. Switzerland uh, joined a little bit later. And that was chaos. We are going to have a look at that. But the most important uh, lines, if you are working with European time zones, are the last two lines, because this is actually what we are using now. Uh, the last two lines, you see that from 1981, um, on the last uh, Sunday on Mar of March, we start daylight saving time, and it goes until the end of October. And these two max uh, words mean that it is defined indefinitely. So in the future, always it will just jump between daylight saving time and standard time. Who remembers that uh, the daylight saving time didn't run until end of October the whole time? Because until 1995, it was until the end of September. So our generation should remember that. And if there is some changement, they will just add uh, some new lines uh, to this file. So um, there is Vaduz, uh, Liechtenstein, there is Link. So you can use Europe Vaduz, uh, Europe Zurich. They are the same. There is just, this is just a symbolic link. And there is this Büsingen. Ever been to Büsingen? This is Germany, almost. There are two time zones in Germany. Both of them start with B. One is Berlin. The other one is not Bonn. It's Büsingen. If you, this is not far away from here. If you see the border between Germany and uh, Switzerland, uh, this is the Rhine River. But river is like this, and the border is not exactly the river because there are some uh, villages on one side on the other side. And there is one bigger city uh, called Schaffhausen. There were very famous uh, waterfalls on, uh, on the Rhine River. And this is like a region on the north of, of uh, Rhine. It's part of Switzerland. And next to Schaffhausen, there is a small village, Büsingen, 1,500 inhabitants. They have two uh, postal codes, like the Swiss and the German one. They have, you, you can call them using 49 or 41 uh, phone call, like through Germany or Switzerland. And they have their own time zone. Why is that? Because these are the 70s and uh, 80s in Europe, this is how the daylight saving time was introduced. You see the year 70, it starts in 73, goes to 85, and you see the numbers 0 to 30 to 29. These are all the time zones, all the European, all the capitals of the European Union uh, countries. Some of them are plus, minus, mi plus, minus one or plus one. Um, and the graph shows the offset in hours in how many countries there is currently the offset. So usually now you would see something like uh, in winter and in summer and winter and in summer, but when you see some irregularities, it means that there were countries that started with their deadline saving time a little bit sooner, a little bit later. So at the beginning there were only five, six uh, countries and later there were more, more, more. Now there are, all of them are following daylight saving time. And if you see like small jumps, it means that some countries started with a daylight saving time a week later, a week sooner, two hours later, and so on. So the, at the end of the 70s, it was real chaos in Europe. And Germany started with a daylight saving time, I think, in 1980. And Switzerland didn't, only one year later. And Büsingen, oh, we forgot to switch with Germany. OK, we are going to stay with uh, Switzerland. And that's why Büsingen links to Zurich. So let's have a look at a few uh, neighboring countries. Berlin, at the beginning, it was 50, 53 minutes, uh, 28 seconds ahead of uh, UTC. Then there was, uh, during, at the beginning of the 20th century, it was like Central European time zone, more or less. And then, uh, at the end of the World War II, there was Soviet zone. During some time, Berlin followed Moscow time. So they were three hours ahead of uh, UTC. And then there was Germany rule, and now European rule from 1980. Uh, Paris, France, again, there is local time, Paris mean time, and uh, during World War II, there were at the CEU um, 
European, Central European time together with Germany, of course. And since 1977, they started with uh, daylight saving time. And this is Amsterdam. Uh, in the comment, there is written that Amsterdam mean time was actually 19 minutes, 32 seconds, and 32, uh, 13 uh, seconds. So really time that you cannot uh, really calculate uh, very easily, um, the offset. Um, but uh, they, then uh, they joined, uh, through Germany, they joined uh, Central European time. This is true. Ah, okay. Um, now you hear something like summertime or daylight saving time and standard time. In some languages, there is a concept of summertime and winter time. Sommerzeit, winterzeit, temps l'été, temps d'hiver, let nichas, zim nichas. The problem is that there is no winter time. There is only one exception in the history of the world. There was in one country once winter time, and this was Czechoslovakia, 1946. The, gov the parliament uh, did a law that the government may declare winter time. Then they did it on the 27th of uh, November, 46. Then it will start on the 1st of December. Then on the 1st of December, Czechoslovakia will go in the standard time even one hour back. So this was not daylight saving time, it was daylight wasting time. <laughs> it worked until the 23rd of uh, February, then abolished and never introduced again. But this law is always valid. And Czech Republic and Slovakia in 93 followed over, they took all the laws from Czechoslovakia. It means that now, it is even in the book of laws I have checked, it, it means that the Czech uh, government or the Slovak government may declare winter time at any time. So when you travel to Prague or Bratislava, just pay attention whether they are not uh, on the winter time again. So this was Europe, quite predictable now, hopefully. But let's have a look at uh, some other uh, time zones. So, for example, there is Istanbul, which is Europe Istanbul or Asia Istanbul because it, uh, it is on uh, both continents. And then you see some information, you have already seen this, but you see there 2011, 14, 15, sometimes EU rule and sometimes something different. What does that mean? There are comments. Turkey will change into summertime on March 28 instead of March 27. This change is due to a nationwide exam. It means on the 10th of March, less than three weeks ahead, they decided we are not going to start daylight saving time on Sunday, we are going to start it on Monday. You can now imagine how fast you can update your systems. They didn't learn nothing, 2014 again. <laughs> DST for Turkey has been changed for this year because of the Turkish local election. So Turkey will move clocks forward one hour, one day later, again mid-February. That's not early enough. The second comment is from Randall Schwartz. Uh, having landed on a flight from the States to Istanbul, I can tell you that nobody respected this time zone change delay. Maybe the word just didn't get out in time. Imagine airports. They have their embedded systems. They are not going to update that fast. Uh, 2015 is officially announced that the, it delays winter time to the 8th of November, so they are going to start it one week later. Um, BBC News, da -da -da. EEST, Erdogan Engineered Standard Time. If you have automatical systems, it doesn't work. 2016, there is little code, but a lot of comments. They want to stay in daylight saving time even in winter. It is permanent. No, they are going to go back. So actually, at some point, the versions included some information that something will change. But then the government decided, no, they are not going to change it. So the comments, they are left uh, in the database, but uh, the code just uh, changed it. Uh, yeah. Caracas, Venezuela. Clocks advanced 30 minutes on the 1st of May, announced two weeks ahead. There is some URL from Reuters, and then, very important, published in the official Gazette and a link to a Venezuelan uh, URL. You click on it, there is some PDF file uh, with, uh, from, from the government that says that they will update it. The work, the job of people who do something in this mailing list is checking for all these sources and then try to get the best information they can get and then publish it here because sometimes you even don't know because there is no official gazette from the government, you just read it in some uh, local newspapers. Porto Prince, this is Haiti. In summer, they have 13 hours of daylight, in winter, 11. And since, still, since 10 years, they vote in February, March, are we going to start daylight saving time or not? Always with 30% probability. Uh, the last uh, sentence, we have received four mails from different people telling that Haiti has started DST again today, and this source seems to confirm that. I have not been able to find a more authoritative source. 
So if there are enough people who just say, okay, I've seen that, 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 that maybe people in uh, the IANA database uh, um, maintaining uh, group are going to say, okay, we have to take the information. So in Pyongyang, nor uh, South and North Korea, until 45, it was of course the same. And then South Korea experimented with, oh, we are going to move from nine, plus, plus nine to plus 830 in, uh, four, no, in 54. So the whole country moved half an hour back, but all international authorities, uh, like uh, everything that has with naval, aeronautics, uh, meteorology, telecommunications, they just were afraid that they would have problems, uh, they would have problems uh, communicate uh, with the exterior, so they stayed with nine, uh, plus nine hours. So it means South Korea was internally, was half an hour uh, behind the external services. Uh, North Korea, they started experimenting uh, quite late, 2015. According to many new sources, North Korea is going to change to the 8.30 time zone on August the 15th, announced one week ahead. But the most important, of course, bells rang out midnight as part of the celebrations. 2018, they moved back. North Korea re revert its time zone again back to Korea standard time, announced on the 29th of, uh, 9th of uh, April, while the change was on the 5th of May, so only six uh, days ahead, seven days ahead. Um, and then the last thing, it appears to be the front page story at the top in the rightmost column. You click, you get a PDF with 10 columns with some Korean text, and then you can find the information that the government is going to switch to a different time zone. So, you know, everyone does like he please. So, this is where you can get the information. I invite you warmly to read more. You will find certainly something that I have missed, and then please give a lightning talk tonight or today, tomorrow uh, that you have found something about your time zone. And the question is, what will happen after 2021? Because the European Union is going to stop switching, probably. It's going to stop uh, switching between daylight saving time and standard time. But it is not sure whether they will stay with Central European time or switch to, they call it summer time, but actually Eastern European time. Um, so what will happen? Some big country maybe will uh, decide, okay, we are going to stick with that time zone and all the surrounding countries. Oh, we don't want to have a border with you with different time zones. Uh, we are going to uh, go with you. But that's wrong because nowadays there are European Union internal borders that uh, have uh, time zone differences, like between Portugal and Spain, between Poland and uh, Lithuania, or between uh, Hungary and Romania. But what will happen? Zurich will probably keep the EU rule, and only in the last two lines, this max will be replaced by 2021, or a combination of that. Okay, so what you can do to avoid, or avoid, <laughs> not to get mad about all these uh, time zones, don't invent your time zones, never. Don't hard code any rules. If you check, is it the last uh, Sunday of March between two and three o'clock, so I have to do something? No. Keep your time zones uh, lips up to date. It means if you um, want, what you can even do is to somewhere to store the information that uh, these local time zones are from the TZ data version 2019B because in the next uh, edition they may change. For example, 2019B uh, edition uh, uh, introduces the abolishment of daylight saving time in Brazil. So for example, this year Brazil in our winter is not going to uh, start the daylight saving time. And if you now have a Linux system, it is still not in uh, TZ data, so you have to uh, update it uh, accordingly later when it, uh, when it comes. Follow your government's intentions to modify your time zone and inform TZ IANA org, please. If you write a nice comment, it will just stay in the archives and a future me or someone else is going to show your comments in a talk. And if you can avoid the time zones. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miroslav. T talking about time, we've got uh, five minutes left for questions. So come to the microphones or get mine. Hello. Uh, uh, can I give you one new example for your slides? Uh, when Europe moves away from uh, summertime and 
around that time, it is very possible that the UK will have left uh, the EU. Uh, Ireland at the moment shares a time zone with the UK and will probably work with Europe in the same time zone and get rid of daylight savings. That will mean that in the south of Ireland, uh, the time zone will be one hour different from the north of Ireland. So in moving north or south to north, you can go back in time. <laughs> Just a little example. Fair enough, thanks. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, yeah. Yes, please. So early on in your presentation, you mentioned the example of localizing a time in the wrong way and then getting an offset of 34 minutes. And you showed that the 34 minutes was actually an all time zone. Can you tell us why does it do that? Like why does it pick the first time zone? Because yeah, that's I. This is some internal implementation. I didn't study that, um, but I imagine that actually this PYT is a time zone object. Can you can differentiate it between a passive and active uh, object? Passive would be okay. I am here. Uh, use my attributes. And active is I have to take your data and do something with that because actually time PYTZ has to calculate what was uh, the real time zone offset at that time in the history. Time zone uh, localized it also uh, decides whether it is whether the time the daytime object is uh, ambiguous or not. Because imagine that you give it uh, the daytime object that is uh, time zone naive uh, from the end of uh, October. 30 in the morning where it is not clear that whether it is the daylight saving time or not. So actually it has to decide so you have to pass your data to this object. But I, I have heard that some people are unhappy with the implementation how Python that does. Yeah. yeah. It could be better. Yeah. Um, I have a question uh, about the uh, library you recommended. Um, I started using date utils in that instead of PyTZ because that follows your operating system, so you don't have to rebuild your code. Is there a reason you shouldn't use it? OK. Uh, as I told you, you can, PYTZ is more or less the standard, but DateUtil is perfect as well, because both of them are based on TZ data. Uh, and this depends on the, on the operating system you are using. So for example, in uh, different Linux distributions, PYTZ is depending on TZ data or not. So, for example, Debian Ubuntu depends on TZ data. So, if you update TZ data, all libraries, everything on your system will get uh, the right, the correct, the unique information. But in Arch Linux, PYTZ is compiled itself, and uh, it doesn't depend on the TZ data package. And this happened actually last year in uh, May, June, when uh, North Korea switched uh, to from 8:30 to 9. Um, and on one computer with the current system. Arch Linux computer, I, uh, did, uh, the, I asked for the current time in Pyongyang uh, in, Lin in uh, Linux, in date uh, command uh, um, in the command line, and in Python. And there was offset of half an hour because PYTZ was still in the old version and this data was already fresh. So you have to pay attention how it is compiled, how it is on your system. If data util depends on TZ data, that's perfect. But actually, you can uh, compile data util probably that it, com uh, it uh, contains all the information itself. I don't know. It's possible, yeah. Sorry. Uh, is PyTZ used in the standard Python libraries, like date time? So if I, if I do a calculation there going uh, 100 years back, I will not end up from today's midnight at 100 years as ago sometime during the day because there was some weird offsetting. No, this is the, PYTZ is not uh, in the standard library. It, not, it is not in the standard library because it is something that changes quite often, several times a year. Uh, it is not in the standard library. Because otherwise you could take uh, some current uh, Python, compile it, and then run it infinitely. But the TZ data information, you have to update it from time to time. Yeah. Okay, so if there are no further questions, um, so we are and running out of time. Until tomorrow evening, so. Yeah, uh, just reach out to me, and we will be will be around uh, and give him a big round of applause. Thank you.